In this grasshopper tutorial, uh, I want to model the Beijing water cube in grasshopper. So we're going to model this from scratch in grasshopper and make those ETFE panels and the structure. Uh, so you can also download this example uh, from the website and uh, look at the algorithms for the exercise if you want to know what happens. And you have to also install the Viverbird plugin and the Launchbox plugin, which I will also uh, put in the website. So first of all, what I'm going to do is to explain uh, the steps uh, for modeling the Beijing water cube. Uh, first, if we just uh, turn this off, uh, what we have to do is to make a shell a box here because we want to make those uh, Voronoi cells uh, in the water cube uh, be in the, in the shell of a box, not in a complete box. So we're going to first make this with a simple example in the grasshopper uh, and then we are going to produce those uh, Voronoi cells and get a simple intersection to produce those, uh, produce those cells in the shell. As you can see here, let me just bake this so you can see the results and we'll produce that in the shell. And after that, uh, we can simply go for a dispatch and uh, only have the faces on the surface and not on the ground. So we're going to pick those on the faces and then we can simply uh, make the uh, outlines of that. So it's not going to be hard. We can use uh, Weaverbird by that. And then we can also uh, use a simple technique, which I want to explain here before we start the grasshopper tutorial. Uh, we can simply, uh, let me just turn on the curves, uh, offset that with the Weaverbird curve, uh, and that's the basically the mesh window of the Weaverbird. And then I'm going to move the center or the centroid of those in the normal direction and make an extrusion. So you can see here, we will make that extrusion. And the last step will be simply to make that extrusion into a mesh. So we can use the Weaverbird Catmull Clark uh, to simply, let me just bake this, to simply make that into a smooth ETFE panel, which is sitting on those borders. So uh, we can use that to make that, and you can see that this is the results, and uh, you can see that smooth blend of that uh, in the mesh, which I can also bake this and have the results. So this will be the steps I'm going to take and I'm going to model this from scratch. So let's first of all make the box in the shell. Uh, you can also uh, model a box in Rhino and use the shell command. So I'm going to show you why I didn't use the shell command because uh, if you use the shell and give this a thickness, you can see here, Let's just put that three and delete this face. Okay. The problem with this is because it's modeled in Rhino, when you use that uh, model, those uh, Voronoi cells in that, you will have problems on the faces because some of those faces will normals go outside, some will go inside, and there will be lots of problems. So I just uh, tell, I encourage you to model this in Grasshopper because. Uh, this is some of the bugs or problems you will have if you model some in Rhino. So remember, if you have uh, problems in the normal direction, whenever you model things in Rhino and then bring it to Grasshopper, uh, perhaps you're going to uh, have to take the step and model this in Grasshopper. So uh, that's going to be easy. We can model a box in Grasshopper and then model another box inside that with a, a thickness, which will use something like a uh, length for that and then we'll just simply uh, use a difference. So let's just make this. Uh, I'm going to go to the surface and the primitive and use the uh, domain box. Uh, the Okay, let's just do this. Uh, you can see that the domain box is using a uh, base, so it's the XY plane, that's okay. Uh, let's just put the bifocals plug in so you can simply see the name okay uh, there is a domain here so you can see that it's minus two to two so it's minus two let's just draw this and explain this this is something like minus two to two 
uh, for that. So that means four for the length. How can we control that? We can simply go to the math and use this construct domain tool. And I'm going to use that and give this to the x. Uh, so sorry, I've got a flu and excuse me for my voice. Uh, if it sounds weird, okay, so let's just get back to this. Uh, if I use the domain start and right click on it, we can use an expression here, so let's just do this. And we can go to the expression and maybe type a minus x, okay, divided by two. That means uh, if I want to, let me just explain that in the white space. If we want a box with a dimension, assume that's the x dimension, and we're using the domain, uh, we can say that's from minus x divided by 2 to x divided by 2. So that will just make an x. Okay, so we can simply make the start a minus x divided by 2 and uh, x divided by 2. So we can now just give a number, maybe we want this 25, and this will exactly be uh, 25 as you can see here. Uh, so now we can just copy this for also the y direction and copy this for the z, but for the z we don't need to go down, so we can simply make a domain from 0 to that number, so let's just give this a number and just give this to the z direction. So we can simply control the z and okay let's just control that in the y direction and in the x direction so this is the box to make that simple solid uh what we want to do is assume let me just draw this again we're just looking at this from the front we want to make another box inside this okay so we will have this thickness let me just draw this so you can see that we have a thickness here and assume that this is the center of that uh, let me just draw this at the center and we said that minus x divided by 2 to x divided by 2 okay so if we want to have we want to have that thickness here uh, we can simply say uh, minus x divided by 2 um, plus t because we're going to go into the forward section so it's going to be plus t 2 x divided by 2 minus t okay so this is going to be something like this let me just type this so you can understand minus x divided by 2 plus t uh, so because we in the minus x direction we go plus and again we have this mm, x divided by 2 minus t uh, that is because we want to just uh, have a smaller size, okay? So this will just make the size in the x. That's also true for the y. And that's also true for the z. And for the z, it's going to be uh, like z minus t. And if we want to just make this subtraction, we have to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make a box, just scale it a little bit down. So let's just make this. This is not going to be hard. And let's just copy this. And we can also use the uh, move this and use the Alt key to copy. But let's just type this domain box because I don't want those connections. And now I'm going to uh, go for here. So let's assume that the thickness is something like 2.25 and we can type a uh, function here. So let's just go to the math and type uh, expression or uh, evaluation doesn't really matter. So let's just go for the expression and let's right click on this variable x. I'm going to name it x and name this t for thickness and let's just give this to the input and t to the thickness and double click on this we can type a formula here so it's an expression it's going to be a minus x divided by 2 plus t and you can see that's no syntax errors here so let's just say okay again we will have this for the y so let's just name this a y that's going to be minus y i just forgot to give this a plus x minus t i've explained that okay and again we can simply put that to 
plus y minus t. Okay, let's just give this. So we will have this for the first domain, the x that we'll have for the y domain. So let's just make this a construct domain that goes to the x, a construct domain that goes for the y. And here you can see that this is the thickness, and we can just simply control that. You can check it out from the top and see that this is the thickness. 0.37 okay so this is the control of the thickness and for the z i'm going to start from minus uh, something because i want to just have a solid subtraction so let's just make a domain maybe minus uh, okay we can just type this minus one will just be sufficient for that and the domain end will be again this uh, minus t. So let's just copy this. Let's just say this is a z. Let's give the z to that and type z divided by 2. We don't need divide divide by 2 because that was the height. So let's just give this a z minus t. Okay. We had a z direction. We didn't want that. So let's just give this to the end and let's just give this and go to the front. So you can see that this is also affecting the thickness. If I just give this uh, size here, you can see that's 0 0.6. Okay, so that's okay. And that was minus one to just bring it down the box and we're good to go. So you can see how simple it is to produce that box. You can also uh, make this into a complete uh, tool. So if you want to make this into a tool, we can just simply I want to explain to you how you can make this as a tool. You have to go to the input and give those uh, inputs to this and this. Let's check this out. And this one and this one. Again, we will have another one here for the Y. Let's just see which connection is that. Okay, that delete that. Again, we will need another one for the Z direction. Uh, let's see where it is. That's okay. And again, that will go for thickness. So let's just give this to T and we're good to go. I'm going to also put this in the file. So uh, for those who want to make this a simple tool, you can uh, see the results. So let me just turn back here and fix, finish that. So let's go to the intersection, uh, shape, and I'm going to use a uh, solid difference. So it's going to be something like this. I'm going to difference that from this one. And that's it. You can see that this, let's just bake this. You can see how easy it is to produce a shell. So for a box, and I'm going to give this again to this cluster. And now we can give this an output. It's really easy. You can just simply make tools in Grasshopper. So we can just name this an X, name this a Y, name this a Z, and name this as a thickness. And here we have the box, the shell, something like that. So let me just choose everything, middle click or right click and use the cluster. And here we are, let's just make this up. And you can see that this is the result. So uh, always we can also use this if we want. You can also have this in the example file. So if I give just a 25, let's just give this to the X, a Y and a Z and a thickness. You can see that this will just control the X, this will control the Y, and this will control the Z, and this will control the thickness. You can see that if I give it zero, it will be a complete box. And this will just simply make that box happen. Okay, so you can always use that cluster to produce a box for it. So let's just turn this off and put it for those who want to use it. So just turn this off. You can also use that. Let's say that's the shell. Okay, so let's just get to the... Uh, uh, let's continue this. I'm going to go for a uh, uh, Voronoi 3D. You can also watch the. Let me just type this. 
okay uh, you can also go and watch the Voronoi uh, 3D tutorial and what I'm going to do is to type Voronoi 3D okay and let's assume that this is the main box we want to produce it okay uh, we can use a pop a populate geometry uh, I think that's better to focus on populate geometry because populate 3D is on a box but this is going to work in anything so we can always use a populate geometry for anything so let's just give this to a box uh, the count we can give maybe 120 points we need here a seed can be any number we can give this and change this okay and points is a uh, pre-existing point we don't need that so let's just give this to the point it will just produce uh, the box based on its assumption which is that box but you can also give that to the box that doesn't really matter so we can also increase or decrease that maybe 100 and maybe 80 points based on your project and if I just bake the cells you can see that those are cells are in the box and now uh, we can simply find the intersection of those cells okay turn that off with the box with the shell so let's just go to the intersection and use this uh, solid intersection here so we can go and use this solid intersection I don't know which one so let's just check this out the intersection with the cells and the box if it doesn't give a result we can just flip that and here we go so you can see that's really easy and we just produce those Voronoi cells uh, okay so now what I'm going to do is to uh, bring out those uh, faces on the facade and work on them so how can we do this we can just simply deconstruct that on the surface and deconstruct brep tool just deconstruct that into faces and we now we need those faces which are uh, on the facade how can we do this we can simply mm, go for area use the area centroid to get the areas of that okay and what I'm going to do let me just show you here uh, assume that let's just draw a box and these are the centroids of those looking at from the front and there will be also points in that box let's assume that we just make a, a really near box to that so it's really near so just assume that's here and a little bit bigger at the z direction and test if those points are in the box or outside the box because the outsides will be simply the facade you can use that so let's just do this uh, I'm going to go for the another box here okay and what we want to do is to also give that a thickness maybe you can use this copy paste this right that was the thickness one and we can simply give this a really small thickness so maybe we can just give this 0 0.01 and here's the box you can see this will just put those points outside and the other points inside you can also dismiss those points on the ground because they are inside that so we can simply use that box again so let's just check this out uh, we can go to the analyzers in the surface and use point in brep so we can check that if that point is in the box or not so let's just do this point in brep those points check in that box so some of them will be true some of them will be false and then we can use dispatch you can also watch the dispatch tutorial we talked about dispatch before and now we can dispatch those faces based on this true and false that's it and now we will have two groups groups that is false which is inside that and that is true so you can see that's exactly the facade we wanted okay so let's just work on this uh, you can download the vivo but I also put this in the website but for those who want to just download this really easy you can go to uh, parametric3d.com backslash en backslash 
Weaver Bird. Okay, you can always download this from uh, this address, or you can also uh, download the launch box from parametric3d.com backslash en backslash launch box. So remember, you can always do that. We will have that Weaver Bird plugin here installed, and we will have that frame and window, which we can simply use here. So let's just do this. Uh, I have a picture frame and I have a window, and you can't give this because it's not a mesh. Uh, how can we just uh, make this uh, as a mesh when we have a surface? You can see that the inputs is mesh or polylines. You can see here. So we're going to go for the polylines. We can simply connect a curve to this, and this will extract the borders. Let me just bake this so you can see the results. And here it is. That is the polyline. And now we can give this polyline for the offset. So let me just put the control M. Or you can go to display and preview mesh edges on. And I'm going to go with the insert type parallelogram and give a number below one, maybe 0.24%. Here we go. We can see that this. Okay, I gave it to the insert type, so let's just give it to distance. And you can see that you can start from 0 0.2. There will be also a problem with some of them that you can see it here. If you have problems, you can go with percent and give this maybe 2.56. So remember, you can always go. Uh, it just, it just, mm, it's, uh, you can also check it out. You can see that. It's a little bit bigger or smaller on some edges, but I guess the best thing is parallelogram because it will give you give you a smooth result. Let's just give this, but check out and be aware about these small uh, Voronoi cells because they will just not give you good results. Anyway, that's not really important. Uh, now we want to extrude them, so we go to the Viverbird plugin. And we use the mesh thicken. But remember, if you give this to the mesh thicken, so let's just give this maybe 1.25 for the distance. I want to explain about this. Let me just bake this. Uh, you can see that there will be problem here. You can see that that there is the problem at the corners. To make that fixed, let me just delete this. You have to make all of those meshes into one mesh. So we have explained about that in many tutorials in the Viverbird tutorial. Uh, I explained that we can join and mesh, join mesh and weld that. So let's just do this, give that mesh. Remember, you have to flatten. So all of those 69 meshes will just weld into one and then just weld to true to make that 69 meshes into one mesh. Then you can just go and give that a thickness. Remember, you have to give that a small thickness because you can't really give that big thickness. And you can see that will just go uh, really smooth and give you better results. And here we go. You can see that that's it. And that is really cool. You can produce that. Remember that there is small holes. You have to think about that because Vorona is a random thing. We'll, we'll sometimes have problems, OK? So if you want to, you can simply go here and maybe change the seed to maybe 30. You can also change the number to maybe 120. We can see that there's a small thing down there, but anyway, that's the problem with the Voronoi, but you can fix that. So here we go. We have more cells and the results, and this is the border, okay. So again, we have this uh, mesh polyline, insert type to parallelogram, 0 0.16, and we have that here and because i want to make a mesh uh, a warnoy cell is sometimes a five or six edge cell and you can't convert that to mesh because remember always a mesh has a four edge uh, or a three edge that's a mesh uh, a three edge or a four edge it's not five or so on so if you want to convert that into a mesh you can uh, have the centroid and extrude that to point and we will have triangle meshes and this will be all converted into meshes so remember you have to always convert your uh, polygons into mesh by uh, ex uh, extrude them to a point you can do that with just with a centroid i'm going to extract the centroid 
and move them in the z direction. So let's just move them in the z direction will be the normal of the cell. So what I'm going to do is to go, this is going to be a trick. You can always extract the normal direction. Uh, you can always connect a plane to a polygon, that's a flat polygon, and then give it a vector. So remember, you can give this a plane, and again, connect a vector to this, and this will be the normal direction. So this is a unit vector, so let's just go to the math and multiply that with maybe 2.25. Here we go and give this to the motion. And now you can see that they are all moving in the normal direction. That's really great because if you do other methods, you will see some are going down and some are going up. So that's really great. And good news, we can have that as a mesh. We can simply go to the uh, extrusion and use extrude to point, extrusion to point, and extrude that cell into that point. Here we go. You can see that we can also make that extrusion more. And this is the base thing which I will also use to convert that to mesh. And here we go. So we're going to give this... You can see some of those things are small and they are bringing bigger things. So you can do a little bit of trick if you want to just normalize this thing. If you, uh, you can see that this is too much for some of those cells. You can see it here. If you want to normalize that cell, so you can see some are uh, not really good. So let's check it. Okay, if you want that, it's, it's going to be exercise. You can simply use that area and then remap this to the minimum and the maximum you want to extrude, move that in the z direction, then multiply that in the normal vector. So if you want to control that, you can simply do that. I will not do that, so you can have a simple exercise on it. Okay, here we go. It's ready to convert to mesh, and we can go to the mesh utility and use that simple mesh tool. Or you can just type simple, because it is a simple mesh. And here we go. You can see that we have those meshes here. And remember, you have to uh, give this, I forgot, because you can see that its extrusion, uh, extrusion is going to the end. We can give the out mesh, which we use that to go inside as the extrusion to point. So let's just give this as a base. So it sits down and goes on the borders. This is the correct one. Let me just show you. You can see that's the correct one. Okay, and now we are ready to just smooth that with uh, Beaverbird, Catmaw, Clark, uh, Subdivision, and that's it. So let's just give this, give this a level three. Okay, you can see that's going to smooth that, but we want that to sit on the corner. So let's just go to the smooth naked edges and get that to fixed. So we can just go to the fixed and it will sit on the corners. We can turn everything off. Just turn out, turn on the mesh thicken and the Catmull Clark subdivision, and here we go. Let's just decrease that number to maybe 1.5. And here it is. So we can bake that into layer one and bake that into layer two, okay? So here we go. You can see we can go and give this layer to a little bit of simple blue material with the transparency so you can understand that this is uh, something like an ETFE material sitting on that. And you can see that we can fix that with a remap. So I just told you that you can remap the areas so you can have better results. It's not really hard. So for those who are really lazy about this, let me just do this because I know some of those will not uh, check this out. So I'm going to remap this. You have to also download the remap tool. We talked about this remap tool always that you can download that from parametric 3d.com backslash en backslash remap. You can also download this from the remap. And we're going to remap the area to maybe from, oh, I don't know, 1.2 to 
to something bigger and give this to the multiplication, okay? And you can see that those are getting too big. We can just decrease that. And those small ones, we can just make them smaller. You can check this out. You can go from 0 0.5 to 1.2, and that will give you better results. You can see that this will control that. So we don't get that, where was it? Something like this. You can see that this controls that small ones. And that is because this is for the smallest one. This is for the biggest one. So we can control that here too. And here we go. Uh, we can simply bake this into layer two and go and see this. You can see that's a better results, especially for those things. Let's just fix this. Okay, let me cancel this. Go to Grasshopper. I have a problem here. Let's check this out. Okay, I just gave the minimum and the maximum the wrong one. Okay, I just checked this out. This was the smallest for the biggest. Okay. So you can see that this is just controlling the small ones. We can go and give this. And another problem when we have to remap and we have groups, uh, I have talked about this in many tutorials uh, for those who don't know about this. You can see that this is uh, in groups, so it's not going to remap this. So I'm going to flatten this. I, I told that you can do an exercise on this. And then we have to bring that back into that group. You can see that this is a one or two and up to the end. So how can we do that? We can simply go, this is going to be a little bit awkward and a little bit hard. So what happened? When we didn't flatten this, uh, the remap will go for each of those data. So the first one will just be remapped from 0 0.2 for to 0 0.9. Uh, you can also dismiss this part if you just okay with that, but this is going to be great if you uh, just cover this section. Uh, then we are going to uh, again, remap this one data from 0 0.04 to 0 0.9. So I always talked about this. When we want to remap, we don't need uh, grouped data. So what we have to do is to flatten this, but the data of our group data will be just gone. So let's just flatten this so uh, all of those data is gone and they are all uh, they are all compared together from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 and then what i'm going to do i have to make this back into that group how can we do that when we just flatten that you can see that one of those groups are one one is two one is one again you can go and use the list lengths let me just put a panel here so you can see this and then flatten this and this is the number of groups we want. And then you can use the partition group. So this is a little bit of advanced grasshopper for those who don't really know. I just encourage you to watch more videos because this is really uh, the core of grasshopper. And you can see that the data is back into the groups. And now we can just go and that's it. So this was the small ones. And now you can control this for the small ones. You can see that this is controlling this and this is controlling the bigger ones. Okay, and this is the way you can control that. I can bring that a little bit down. Okay, and that small ones, we can control that with this number. You can see that this is affecting the small ones. So now we can bake this into the layer two and bake this into layer one. So this was the small trick you had to do if you want to have uh, better results. And you can see that's better, that is really great. And we can see that this is acting good because this is not the uh, dimension for this one. And this is really different. So this is give, giving us smooth results. And let's just give this layer two, I don't know, transparency. And at the end, what we have to do is to make that, let's just delete these things. And we can also put the control M or dimension display preview mesh edges on and off if you want to see that smooth thing, it really doesn't matter. So what we have to do is let's just go back to this patch. We had another group which was inside the box. 
you remember. Okay, that is not really important because we are not making a real project here because if we want to make a real project, there are, uh, there are lots of things for the detailings and so on. But for now, what I'm going to do is to go to the Launchbox plugin. You can also download this from parametric3d.com. Okay, let's just type this en backslash launch box. Okay, download this, install it, and you will have a frame. This will also help you to just make a panel frame on those surfaces. So let's just give this and give this a 0 0.9 maybe scale factor. And that's it. That's for all the project we needed. We will bake this in the layer 1. We will bake this in the layer 2. And let's just bake this frame, not the panels, in the layer 3 so you can see the results. Okay. And here it is. So let's just go give this again that blue transparent material so you can understand that. And you can see that we have a simple structure on this, which you can also see on the images of the um, Beijing water cube. Uh, on the roof, you will have that. So this is really going to help you to make that. And also you can see that we have it here. We'll just make you a, a simple structure. And here we have the water cube, the Beijing water cube. And we made that in Grasshopper. 